us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you that we are here. We lift up our hearts and our minds to you. We open our spirit that you may speak to us. I ask that you inhabit this place right now. That I may reduce as you increase. Rend and stir our hearts, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to speak to us about four stages to becoming an effective Christian. These are four stages your life needs to go through and the four stages that any life in this area needs to go through. Every person in their life needs to come to a point of understanding the redemptive power of God. They need to come to an understanding why did Jesus come. They need to come to a point to differentiate between religion and living for God. When we live for God, our life reflects purpose. When we do not live for God, our life does not reflect purpose. We live for things. Someone said, when you become a son, your birthday gift is responsibility. Your birthday gift is responsibility. But when you're a child, you want a car. When we are children of God, we understand who we are, we know that our Father in heaven is in heaven. We know that Jesus is the firstborn. And that we are heirs together with him of the heavenly kingdom. If I am a heir of the heavenly kingdom, what can, you, what can you give me on earth that is sufficient for a child? Do we understand what I mean? Even if you give me the whole United States of America, there is actually nothing compared to what my father has. Heaven and earth belong to him. Up until now, scientists are trying to understand the constellations and the galaxies. Russia is sending rockets to the moon. And to Mars. And is sending rockets to the moon. They are still trying to understand all these things. What is my inheritance? As a son. That is how I begin to think when I understand my position in God. The devil fell from heaven. And today he tries his best to take as many people to hell as he can. When a child is born, even before the child is born, even before conception, a child is conceived in sin. A child, a baby is conceived in sin. And as soon as the baby is conceived in sin, the devil begins to seek to destroy that life. That is why there are laws around the world and the world is struggling to see that they can have things like abortion. Because, because they want to terminate a life. One single life like this can turn the world around. One man said, give me a place to stand and I will move the whole world. This country, Uganda, is having certain circumstances because of one individual somewhere. 
He was conceived. He was born. He was raised. And he has become something. It could be the village of Uloba. It could be the district of Kampala. And because an individual was born, and they became something, they have capacity cause certain things to be. And the devil knows this pretty well. That is why when a baby is in the womb, the battle begins to rag. That even at birth, he would like to take that life away. If he cannot take that life by killing it, he would like to take the direction and the future of that life. So we live in a battle. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. And uh, we'll read from. Okay, I thought I'd forgotten the password for my. Let's go there. When God created the heaven and the earth, I want us to begin from there because that tells us the heart of God. I'm going to read, is that a Luganda Bible? No, it's English. Okay, I'll read the Luganda Bible. Let me uh, switch to Luganda. Okay. Oh my goodness, I put to Lunyangoli. Awa katonda na yu geranti. Tukolo muntu mchifana nyi cha fe. Mungeri ya fe afugenge evyo mnyanja. Nevi nyonyi. Evyo mpanga. Nente. Nensolezo mnsiko. Nabulieche warula kunsi. Buacho katonda na tondo muntu mchifana nyi che. Mchifana nyi cha katonda. Mwayaba tonde la omosajja. No mkazi. Mwayaba tonda. Katonda na haba uo mkisa. Era katonda na haba gamba anti. Mwe yonge renga, mwa renga, mjuzensi mjifuge. Mufugenga, evi omu nyanja, nevi nyonyi, evi omu banga, na vuli echiri novu lamu, echitambula kusi. Amen. 26. Then God said, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. male and female. He created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish and the sea and the birds of the air. And over every living creature that moves over the ground. After God had created man, the Bible says he created him in his own image. You and I were made in the image of God. We, we have the potential of God within us. We can command something and it happens. That seed is inside of you. The enemy knows that you have that seed inside of you. Now, every time you want to show up, he sees the seed of the of God in you. He sees the potential of the Lord in you. He sees that you could be a Kenyan, but you can be the president of America. Didn't Obama become that? Every little child you have seen here, they can become anything. Because that is the seed the Lord put in every child, in every person. Then he commanded and said, go and multiply, be fruitful. Fill the earth and subdue it. That was a command. That is why I was talking to the pastor. When they came here, it was a valley and full of. Now we are filling the earth. And I want you to know. 
I want you to close your eyes. Look at this place where the church is. I want you to reflect back 300 years ago. What was here? The place was here. Do you think someone owned this place? The owner was there, but do you know them? We don't know them. Amen. That is how it is, that is how it was, and that it that is how The Lord created things to move and turn over and make reverse. Now I want us to understand. No one of us is going to inherit, inherit the earth. We are here for a moment. We are here for a moment. After here we are going somewhere. Where we are going that is the most important. But because when we are born we are in the image of God. We have the purpose of the Lord why he created us. There are things he wants us to accomplish. There is a reason why he put us on earth. After we have accomplished them, then he calls us back to That is why even if we are so wise, every time every person will get to your time, and you leave the earth and you go, even if you terrorize the whole of Globa, and then you say I want the whole house to I want to finish the whole of this world to the road and I will be alone a time will come and he will call you to go back to him your body depending on the people whom you are with they may take you into their furnace and burn you and they will collect your ash just into a bottle if they are not like that and they are like us, they will make for you a good grave and put you there. And then, then they feel sorrow and they will cry. After one year, two years, and you'll be forgotten. After a hundred years, the owner of the whole of this farm, they may come and even put away your building. Because the people he has put her, they have, have different views and Hallelujah. attitudes. Amen. Amen. Usually we are distracted. When we get into the world, because the enemy doesn't want us to accomplish what God wants us to do. He wants us to move out empty handed. He wants to take us where he was already told to be. So that we may also perish in that fire. So he comes binding us in chains. Some chains are already awaiting for us. When we come out. Amen. There could be a witch doctor in that place. Could have given them something that whenever a child comes through, you tie this around their waist. That is the first chain. And then they cut your body. They used to cut. They cut, cut my body and put their medicine and said what? And they make you go into convenience you don't understand. And they kill God. And they make covenants on your behalf. Then they serve even to you. Amen. That means you've started the world but in chains and bondages. Things happen for generations and generations and generations. Some of the things we've inherited them from our great grandparents. They've been following. And they got used to them like that. There are some families that have shrines. At home where I yali, come from, we had a shrine. Tono, tono, tono. We had a small shrine. There was a very big tree. The tree was as big as the size of the shrine. 
I grew up seeing these <laughs> things. They are homes with shrines like that. That man after he was <laughs> And they left her here behind. And then they transferred all the demons and to that person. You find that every generation that family is bound. What I'm talking about, we all come from no such places. We are born in sin. We are born in bondage. And that is why Jesus came to save us. That is why in Luke chapter 4 verse 18, I want us to read. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Bible should I read? Kanso ke nsome mu Luganda. Okay. Ne kambe kule 10 no mukaga tufune burunja makuru. Yesu najja enaza alesi ji yakulira. Kulunaku olwa sabit na yingira mu kunganiro ngabwe yali empisa ye. Ndagalo buza kulira nya iyo yempisa yo. Olwa sabit yo yingira mu kunganiro. Na yimirira okusoma. Ebamu we kitabo cha nabi saya nabi kule kitabo nala be kitundu awa wandiki dwanti omuyo gwa mukama guli kunze kubanga yamfuka kama futa okukulira abavu ebigambe ebirunji antumye okutegeza abanyage okutebwa no kuzibula abazibe ba maso okuta abanyigirizibwa okulangirwa mwaka gwa mukama ogwakirizibwa Amen. Luke chapter 4 from verse 16. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was his custom and he stood up to read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. To the, to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. To release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a year of the Lord's favor that is proclaimed over your life. But before you reach the year of the Lord's favor there are stages that you need to go through in life. I am speaking to you about four stages that every Christian needs to go through or every human being needs to go through in order to fulfill the purposes of God. And there are four to fulfill the purpose for their life. Stage number one is deliverance. What I have described, I was only trying to show you this is where we come from. The Bible says that if anybody Bible claims yaga. to be without sin, he makes God out to be a liar. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every one of us needs to reach the real purpose why Jesus came. In your life, you need to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. This is the good news he Ge came to bring to the poor. The good news says, I have brought you salvation. And if you are here today, and you have never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. The message I have for you is the good news. The good news of salvation. Today you need not harden your heart. Surrender your heart to Jesus. And you say I am here 
Take and do with me how you want. But after we have accepted Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, the next stage is for us to be delivered from all these things. To be set free from every manner of captivity. To have our life shaped from where we are to a point of purpose and focus. That is why he said, to proclaim deliverance. Some of us, we are born in captivity. Totally captive. Your thinking is captured. Your wealth is captured. When we are delivered and we are free, we think differently. We learn to forgive. Because we are no longer captives. Even to make the blind see. Sometimes we are not seeing yours. You have eyes, but you can't see. That is why during the times of Jesus, he said, Some of you are blind. You're not entering and you don't allow others to, to come in. When a blind person leads another blind, what happens? They they fall into the ditch. This is the reason why Christ came. So, the first step to go through in life, if you have things binding you, if you're bound in gossip, and you're bound in poverty, there are things that have bound you in poverty and you have to be well, delivered from to, them. There are things when we are growing, we are taught by those around us with what they believe in. And they push us deeper into bondages. And someone says, I will never forgive that woman. And that is your mother trying to, to groom you. you. And you grow up hearing through mother that they don't forgive. And you pass by someone's garden and they feel bad. And they start Bewitching. And you grow up knowing that you shouldn't wish, wish others well. Do you know that in Africa that is the, the greatest bondage? When you find someone in the village doing well, and the people in the village. They want to put them down. They even put Nails and on the road to, on the to road, pierce uh, the cars. So that the cars pierce. Yes, but you take They put nails. You can't. Turn no one to move for a good day. It's too much of a joke. And that's why you. Instead of being happy that we have someone who is making it in life, and they become envious. When we grow, grow in such places, we grow up with hearts that are jealous and envious and we don't and we come to church and the sister holds the microphone and serves the Lord and the anointing of the Lord descends and then they start feeling jealous that sister is so proud she thinks she's closer to the pastor. Amen. And they start saying such words. Amen. You can come to church and still remain bound. If you're still bound, you'll not progress to where the Lord wants you to be. Because he says he wants to give you the earth and you subdue it. If you, you cannot subdue the earth if your brain is still there. Praise the Lord. 
Those who are delivered, they wish others well. That's why the Bible says that few words shall be added more. Jesus did things intentionally. Because when they come to your village, they'll ask, who is doing well here? We want to partner with them because the Bible says so. The Bible says the earthly things should teach us the heavenly things. That means that person has a unique Amen. What the Lord wants that we may be born again, we may be delivered. The next stage step to become disciples. Matthew 28 from 18 to 20. That Jesus came to them. He said, and told them that I've been given authority over the heavens and the earth. Therefore. Therefore, because of that, go and make all the earth, all the nations, disciples, teaching yourselves everything. When you're baptizing in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and, and you teach them everything that I told you. If you do that, and I will also be with you all, my, all the days of your life. Do you know that sometimes we remind you of the last bit? You said you'll be with us all the days of our life. And we forget, forget the conditions you put at first that we should become disciples. This step is very crucial. You should take time and know Christ. You should know him truly the way he is. And to know the purposes of the Lord. And to teach them to other people. Amen. Philippians 3.10 Says I want I to want know the know Lord. Christ. I want to know Christ. And the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of sharing in his suffering. Being more like him. In his death. Can you imagine? Who would want to deny themselves? If you you know you really have authority over this and you deny yourself. And carry their cross every day and follow me. Because whoever would want to retain their life, he will lose it. Amen. Because if you want to save your life, you will lose it. But whoever, whoever denies their own life for my sake will save it. At that point, our desire is of Christ and is of the kingdom of God. And we seek, we seek to follow Jesus Christ properly. What this verse is asking of you and me is whatever it takes. You can't that's why he said if someone takes away your shirt even the court give it to him Amen. that is coming to that point of understanding that this is nothing I was told of a story of a church I will not say the church because the story will become long establish like this church the way it is now and then one of the pastors, Omukubasum. one of the ministers, Omukubaweleza. decided to go and start another ministry. Again, we won't go into the details. 
So he comes back and says, all these things, we have raised them together. To be governing. We are sharing them. I'm taking some and others will stay. Praise the Lord. The man of God was staying in this ministry. Do you know what he said? He said, go bring the car. Just take everything. Praise the Lord. There are two understandings there. Oh, your where is all against the Tandika? Throws and his charcoal, a corachi, a chicken. I don't think he understands what he's doing because he's having a, an earthly mentality. So we need to be discipled. That's we stage know, number two. To you know, some is we know where we are, you are a new We need to give ourselves to the Lord. We need to give ourselves to the Lord. But you know, what's the yoke in Uganda? We have to put on the yoke of Jesus. A yoke is something that is put on the oxen. After they put their heads in the yoke, it cannot go this side or the other side. Whenever he leads us, we follow. If he says stop that, you stop it. Even after doing it for 20 years, if he says stop, you stop. Because Because you know what you are about. The purpose of disciple making is spiritual transformation. Is maturing in Christ. And glorifying God when we begin to bear fruit. And multiplying. Second Timothy 2, 2-3. Two the things that you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses. And trust reliable men. And trust reliable men. Who will also be qualified to teach others? It means that when I am delivered, and I am taught and I become established in Christ, in my knowledge and understanding of Christ, God now expects me and trust what I know with others. This scripture recognizes that there are also men who are not reliable. They are here today, they are not here tomorrow. Those are not good in the work of God. Are you here and you are not consistent in God? You are not, you are not, you are not consistent in the ministry. You are not consistently available. That is God being unreliable. We cannot rely on you. But after we are being relied on, and we are entrusted with the seeds of the people that we are relying on. We are also entrusted to teach other people to that, do the same. That is called multiplication. Praise the Lord. That is the second stage. The third stage is being sent. God has everything that you need. To know and understand things of the Lord. Knowing who you are in the Lord. You know that the heavens listen to you. And you start commanding things. Praise the Lord. Now you can be sent. Where we read in Matthew, that is where the gist is. He was sending them after making them disciples. Then he told them that I have been given authority, therefore go. 
Fe, kuteka, teka. Obo kuteke wa, teke wa. Even as we have to be prepared and then sent. Erebo, After we have been sent. We are going to make no, others disciples. Teke, teke, wa, teke, and wa. also prepare them like we were prepared. No, we and thereafter. After baptizing them. The baptism is a signal of the deliverance that we started with. In Acts chapter 20 verse 29. He says I'm sending you like sheep among the wall. I don't know the job you're doing. There is no place you'll go and there are no wolves. Will you turn into a wolf like them or you'll remain a sheep? That will be shown by the stages you've gone through. If you're like Christ, you will remain a sheep. If you aren't yet, we shall find you becoming a wall. You will be that unreliable person. We cannot send you to, to be in the ministry of land. We cannot send you to work at the district. We cannot make you that accountant. And there is nothing we can do you because you haven't yet been transformed to be where we want to send you. When we send you where there are wolves, you also become a wolf. Praise the Lord. We've just joined a place and you see you with but, three cars. But, but, and then we ask, how did you get all these cars and you can't oh, explain? You're just praising the Lord. Amen. There is deployment. If you know that there is deployment and they give you a job in a ministry, they, they have sent you. And then you will kneel down and you don't see the salary. Then ask God, what do you want me to do here? You have a mission life. A year ago, I had just you could be so young like 30 or 60 years your life on earth may be like 30 or 60 you should know that you are here on a mission even when you are looking for a house to rent you should do it as a, a, a someone on mission. If the Lord gives you the house, ask God, what do you want me to do here? Because you are a disciple. You may stay in that house for one or two years, but there is a purpose and reason why you are in that very place. They have not sent you to become a halot. Mark 3, 14-15. And he called them. And he picked them. And he called them disciples. And he made them apostles. So that they are with him. They may be with him. They may be with him. And that he may send them out. The first call of salvation is to be with Jesus. And then he can send you out. After he is sure of what you can do. When we reach that level, we reach a position of dominion. Dominion is inheritance. If it is authority, you inherit the authority. We inherit the authority of heaven. As a child, may inherit an empire of his father. A child who has not been prepared well will run it down. 
They will begin selling it. They will begin stepping on the workers. And within a short period of time, that empire will be no more. The earthly things should teach us that heaven. There are, there are organizations that have fallen. Just because the owner died, Akamba Bus Company is no longer there. Zimwe Construction Zimwe Those things teach us. Even in the spiritual things. The good work you have built. Or your family where you come from. They can all perish and die. Because the person you're living behind you have not prepared them. They don't know the reason why they are here. But when they are well prepared. When you give them the inheritance and they understand it, whatever you've left with them, they take it to another level. Amen. Everyone starts thinking. There are some of you you, here. you feel you want to go and start your own church. And you don't know that you have to be humble, be taught, and then sent we out. We should know that if you are sent out, and my father has to come no and bless you. you. He needs to come and check on you. That he should bless he you. He should be proud of you. Of you. Amen. But when we reach the level of dominion, then we are amazed and surprised at the supply that comes from the hand of God. There is nothing we need that he does not provide. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's what Paul said. So, and he said, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Gambaliza, 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 As I finish, let me tell you one scripture. They were prosecuting him and putting him on a ship to take him to some other place where he And the Lord sent a wind that blew the boat. And everything they had was perished. And they were on water floating. And the Lord took them to the dry land. They call the place Malta. 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 Paulo nabere Malta. And Paul was in Malta. Puchizinga. On an island. But what was in Paul? There was some natural power. The authority of heaven. That the, the, prisoner, the prisoner was telling those who were taking him what to do. And when Paulo nasabida. When they got to that island, Paul prayed for the oh, child of that, the leader of that island. Now, now. And they got healed. Praise the Lord. And that night there was a rain and they put a fire so that they made it warm. And Viper. Viper. A viper. Spark his hand. And he shook his hand. Then they say this man is not normal. The man didn't die because of the power. The power of the Lord, if it is upon you, there is that you need to come. And the Lord started using Paul at Malta. The little time he was there, everyone got to know the power of the Lord. And they brought another boat to take him for judgment. He's still a prisoner. And the people in the island gave him whatever he needed for that journey. Because of that. Can you believe that? Can you believe that, that it is the prisoner that caused the supply for the whole ship on the next journey? 
Okusobola okutambula olugendo oluddako okutwala omusibe bamuvunane that they may be judged it does not matter if your condition may look like you are in prison it matters your understanding of who you are because that prison may be the physical prison that suffering that is physical may be what everybody sees but the true freedom is from within and your capacity cannot be put in the physical presence stand up and let us pray if you feel that you have been in a prison this is an opportunity for you to declare that you are breaking loose and breaking out of that prison if you understand who you are you are breaking loose of that limitation Father in the name of Jesus I present your children to you I ask that your hand may be stretched over their lives. That you give them an understanding of who they are. That you may move them through the phases of life to dominion. That your purpose of our calling Lord may be made manifest in the lives of the people in this place. As you are making it manifest in set free life ministries. We thank you and we bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray with thanksgiving. God bless you so much. Go be free and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.